In this video, we're going to look at enzymes and how they are important for certain processes in the body. The first thing to mention might be the fact that enzymes are biological catalysts. And what we mean by that is that they speed up chemical reactions in living things, but don't change in the reaction and so can be reused. Now we could actually take, an, take a body cell, pretty much any body cell and take a look and you will find inside there lots and lots of different molecules that we call enzymes. Now, if we were to expand one as an example, this is a diagram, but important part on this enzyme molecule is that we have an area here that's called the active site. That's the part of the enzyme that's really important and does the job of breaking things down and building them, building them up. We have lots of different types of enzymes. So I've just got in this diagram, I've just got three different kinds, but the key point I'm trying to get across here is that each type of enzyme has a different shaped active site. Some of these enzymes work outside of cells, for example, in digestion, they are transported out of the cell and do their job outside of the cell. Many of the enzymes stay in the cell and work inside the cell, doing various jobs inside the cell. So what are these various jobs that the enzymes are doing? Well, it's all linked to a special key word called metabolism. Enzymes are responsible for the metabolism of the cells. And metabolism basically means either building new molecules from smaller ones or building new molecules, or it can mean breaking down molecules, usually larger molecules into smaller molecules. So let's have a look at what actually goes on when an enzyme is reacting or taking part in a chemical reaction. So in this flask, we've got a enzyme controlled reaction going on. So we can extract enzymes and get them to work outside of cells. And what we have, as you can see in the, in the diagram here, we've got enzyme molecules in green and in the paler orange color, we've got something called the substrate. That's the substance that the enzyme works on. And here you're gonna see why the active site or the shape of the active site is so important. So the substrate joins with the active site. The site is complementary in shape. In other words, the substrate fits the active site. We then get a reaction that happens. In this case, the substrate is broken down and that gives us our product. We can take a, we can take a look at that one more time on the enzyme below. There we go. So we've got the substrate being changed into a product. There's our product label there. And that's how enzymes can work. So that's obviously breaking down, but the opposite way around would happen when we're building up. So let's put some important labels on this diagram. Here in green, we've got our enzyme molecule with its very specific active site that fits this particular substrate. There's our active site labeled there or highlighted there. And our substrate molecule in the paler orange color there can actually join with the active site and then produce the product, which we, we can see on the right hand side. So there's our two product molecules. So that's how enzymes work. Now, what we're gonna look at next is the idea of factors that affect the functioning of enzymes. And we're gonna start off by looking at how temperature affects the rate of action of enzymes. Here's our graph, if we plot temperature versus the rate of reaction, we'll see that as the temperature rises, we have an increase in the rate of reaction up until a certain point, after which it drops very rapidly. So there's our graph. Why does that happen? Well, as we raise the temperature of a reaction that's controlled by an enzyme, the enzyme gains kinetic energy, moves around much more rapidly because of that kinetic energy and will collide with the substrate much more often, making the reaction faster. Problem is, after a certain temperature, yes, we have a lot of kinetic energy, but that energy has also got the effect of changing the shape of the active site. It actually breaks down bonds that hold the active site in shape. And that active site at high temperatures is permanently changed. That means the substrate molecules will no longer be able to fit inside there. The reaction won't be able to work. We say the enzyme is denatured. Important keyword there. The enzyme is denatured. The substrate can no, long, uh, can no longer fit. Just remember, we don't say the enzyme is killed. 
a mistake I've often seen in written responses. We say it's been denatured. The next thing I want to look at is this idea of the effect of pH. So we've got a pH scale at the bottom there, 1 to 7 or 1 to 6 being acid, 8 to 14 being alkali. And most enzymes have a shape of graph that looks like this. Round about 7, they work at their maximum rate of reaction. And at pHs that are too low or too high, they stop working. They either slow down or stop working. We can have different enzymes, though, that work perhaps in acid. For example, the, the enzymes in your stomach, they would work very well in acid, but not so well in alkali. And also, you can imagine that we have enzymes that work well in alkali, but not in neutral conditions or not in acidic conditions. And the effect on the excessive pHs is very similar to that of when we have too high temperatures. So let's have a quick, make a quick note about that. So here's a diagram of our graph. Our enzyme happily works away at its optimum pH, but when we go beyond this optimum pH, its best pH, similar to before, the active site loses its shape and can no longer work. Just tidy that up a little bit. So again, we say that enzyme has become denatured because of excessive pH. So there's two ways we can denature an enzyme. One is by having temperatures that are too high and the other is by having what we call excessive pH. In other words, too much in the wrong region, to either too alkali or too acidic. Just to mention actually though, um, the temperature that most enzymes work best is around about 37 degrees which is our body temperature. And that's a reason why the body must be kept round about that temperature, or in fact, very close to that temperature because of the enzymes. Now, the final thing we're gonna look at is the effect of substrate concentration on the rate of action of enzymes. As you can see, as we increase the substrate concentration, the rate of reaction increases until we reach a maximum after which it levels off. Now, we need to be able to explain why this happens. So let's take a look at what happens when we have a low concentration of substrate. So here we can see our enzyme molecules in blue and in red there that's our substrate molecules. So we could just make a note here this is a low substrate concentration. Low substrate concentration. And as you can see some of the active sites of the enzymes are unoccupied because the concentration of the substrate is so low. So there's our unoccupied active sites. That leads to a low rate of reaction. Now, if we increase our substrate concentration while keeping the enzyme concentration the same, we can see here that there is much more, there are much more of the active sites that are occupied. There's one enzyme that's not occupied, but all of the active sites for the remaining enzyme molecules are occupied, and therefore we have a faster rate of reaction because we've increased the substrate concentration. Now, what about when we increase the substrate concentration even further? Well, here you can see we've got an, got an excess of substrate. All of the active sites in this example are occupied and there are spare or extra substrate molecules. So the way we can describe this or the way we can explain this is that at a very high concentration of substrate, all active sites are occupied. All active sites are occupied and therefore the rate of reaction cannot go any faster. The rate is at a maximum. So we can make a note of that. We have a maximum rate of reaction. And that's because, as we said, all of the active sites are occupied for a high substrate concentration. Important to note that the enzyme uh, concentration was kept the same throughout in this example. So if we have the enzyme concentration that's the same and we increase the substrate concentration, this is the pattern we get and these diagrams explain the reason why. Okay, so that's it. Enzymes, um, how they work and factors that affect their action. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.